and share my screen right now. Just let me know if you can see my screen as well. Awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Can see it crystal clear. Love that. Love that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So guys, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and uh, kick this thing off. Um, get those questions inside of the chat box. We're seeing a few of them here. Yes, Ernie, the record, this will be recorded, so you will have access to this as well. All right, Marty, you want to just pick any question there? Yes, uh, just one more time, everyone. Do I sound muffled at all? Is my audio okay? Because I saw a lot of people saying I sound kind of muffled. Very muffled, a little muffled. Yes, muffled, a bit muffled. I can hear you, though. Is it clear to understanding you guys? Yes, they're sounding muffled. Clear enough. Clear enough to understand easily. You're clear. Is this better or is it about the same thing? So just speak louder. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in any case That's we're gonna have some photo here <laughs> y'all can clear marty's okay clear enough i can hear you though all right so I'll, i guess i'll let you do primary of the talking okay That's so <laughs> it's all good all good so let's see here um First question, can you clarify the difference between not choosing a category that has too many sellers versus finding a category that has demand? What are we looking for and what do we not want to see? So that question was by Jody. Jody, uh, the criteria that we lay out inside of the group, if you're in the group, uh, we tell everybody that when we're looking at categories, um, the very first book inside of the category, we want primarily to be uh, 2,500 or under. That is our first indicator, and I'm going to go on Amazon and show you this as well. But as our first indicator uh, to let us know that there is profitability in the category. Now, as far as like determining whether the whole category is profitable or not, what we want to do is we want to go look at the hundredth book. And if it's sitting at anywhere between 25,000 and the 50,000 range, um, around that range, that means the whole category is profitable. Now, if we were to look inside of the category and the first book was 2,500 and the hundredth book was 20 and was also like in the 3,000s or so, that would mean there's too much competition. So let's just go ahead and go look at an example of that. So if we come over here to Amazon and click on these three bars and then go to Books and Audible, come on down to Kindle Books. On the left-hand side here, we're going to see a lot of different categories, a lot of different categories that you can choose from. Now, the category that you choose on is obviously, you know, depending upon what your interests are and what you want to publish in. But let's just go ahead and click on Mystery Thriller and Suspense, for example. After we navigate over to this category, it's going to bring up some subcategories, so we'll just choose on Suspense. Now, as soon as we click that, it's not going to take us directly to that category. It's going to bring up a list of books that are inside of that category. So in order to navigate over to that main category, what we're going to have to do is click on one of these books until we find what we want. So let's just click on Vendetta and Death. I'm just waiting for it to load up here. Perfect. So as soon as we get over here, we're going to come on down and we're going to navigate to the products detail page. Now, I'm not gonna click on the you know mystery, thrill, and suspense. This is just an example, so I'm just gonna click on what's right here. So we're gonna navigate over to mystery romance. So after we navigate over to our category, which is mystery romance, what we're gonna wanna do is click on the very first book in the category, which is Save Your Breath by Melinda Lee. Now, as soon as we do that, we'll open it up in a new tab. And we'll come down here to the product detail page. Once again, this is all of a part of this is all a part of our research. 
So we can see that this book is number seven in its category, okay? So although mystery, um, what category was it? Mystery romance isn't listed here. This book is definitely, you know, inside of mystery romance. So we can go off of that criteria. So coming back over to this page, what we'll do is we'll navigate now to the hundredth book. So we'll click the second page. And then we will go to the hundredth book here. Open that up in a new tab. Walking Olivia. So what's important is we come down to this category right here. So as we can see, this book is the 100th book in Mystery Romance, but the criteria for it is 3,494. This is our first indicator, you all, to tell us that this, that this category is way too competitive. We can tell you off the bat that it's probably going to take thousands, you know, per month just to get your book ranked inside of this category. People are just spending too much money in this category for you to rank well. Now, vice versa, if this said 25,000 or let's say 50,000, then this would mean that the category is profitable. That means that there's readers over here, but there's not enough books over here for people to uh, read on. So this is an opportunity for you to put your book inside of this category and pretty much dominate it by, you know, spending on your marketing and advertising efforts to uh, rank up in this category and do pretty well. So we hope that that made sense to you. Just type into the chat box and just say, does that make sense? That made sense. <laughs> Let's see what else do we have here. Other questions? So yes, thank you. So we got one right here that says, for those of us outsourcing using ghostwriters, how much detail do we provide? Do I need to give them an outline with a, a lot of detail or an overview of the content I'm looking for? All right, so what we typically do is we'll go to the reader reviews and we will also, so the first thing that we do is we grab the book itself. And for our ghost writers, we give them this book so that they can read the book and get an understanding for the tone of voice, the experience, the thrills and suspense and excitement that this author has conveyed. And this is really what creates the best selling factor, guys, because we aren't going into the marketplace and giving people you know, just ideas out of thin air. We're giving them things that are already working. So when we hand this over to our ghostwriter, our whole plan and intention is to give them something that's already working and for them to duplicate this model. So let me just be clear that we're not plagiarizing the content, like the characters, you know, the, the, the theme, the setting, all of that will be different. You know, everything that they're doing in the story will be completely different. But what you're maintaining is the tone of voice of that author. Um, the same excitement, excuse me, the same excitement and thrills that um, they receive from this author. So when they read your book, um, you know, they're relating you to this author. They're getting like a similar vibe, like, you know, these are the books that they are used to reading because readers are trained, you know, they're trained to um, buy certain elements on a book cover, you know, certain things that go into a book, price, book length, all these things go into it. Now, another thing that you can do that we do is we also navigate down here to the reader reviews. So we look at these reviews, you know, we see what they said, and these things are literal gold mines, guys. And when we say gold mine, we mean that these readers are telling you exactly what they want inside of the story, what they liked about it, you know, their favorite parts, and vice versa, what they didn't like about it. So these are details that you would also hand over to your ghostwriter in addition to the ebook itself. So they have an idea of what you want inside of the book. Now, our whole goal is to, you know, there's in a perfect world, you know, we'd create the perfect book, but there's no such thing as perfect. So we're trying to get as close to that as we possibly can, or at least close to the reader's expectation and uh, what they got out of this book right here. What else do we got? <laughs> okay, that was a great so question. Yeah, that was a pretty good question. There's some people that would like you to go through the ranking again. Can you give okay. like two more examples for them, for the ones yeah. that didn't really understand it? Absolutely. So we'll just go ahead and do that one more time, guys. So I'll just navigate over to the main website again. Let's just start from the beginning. So slowly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> slowly. <laughs> slowly, gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> All right, so what we'll do is we'll click on these three bars here. 
And then what we'll do is we'll come down to Kindle, e-readers and books. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll click on Kindle books. So by clicking on Kindle books, the reason we're clicking on that is because we want to aggregate a, all the digital copies that we can in these categories. Digital copies just meaning Kindle books. So once again, we have a bunch of different category cho uh, choices over here. And after you have chosen the category that you want to go into, and you won't you know, be able to base it off of just this list alone, uh, your foundation will be the actual numbers that we went over. So the bestseller ranking. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find a book that meets our criteria or sorry, not a book, but a category that meets our criteria. So what we'll do, we will click on, let's just, let's go for romance. So we'll open this up in a new tab. And the next thing we have over here is different subcategories under romance. So what we did was we clicked on a main category, which was romance, and now we're niching down even further, guys. So under romance, they have action and adventure, African-American, anthologies, clean and wholesome, collections and anthologies, and so on. So let's click on, let's click on military romance. So as soon as we click on military romance, it will bring us over here where it lists a bunch of different books that may fall under that category. Now, in order to find this category right here, military romance, what you'll have to do is click through these books until we find it, essentially. So what I'll do is I'll click on this book right here, Nicole Snow, and let's see if she is in military romance. So she is, she is in military romance. She is the second book listed. So with this guys, what you're also gonna see is a bunch of different you know, categories here. But what we're looking for is our main category, so military romance. Um, I mentioned these other categories though because they can be uh, used as markets that you go into as well. So if this one doesn't turn out, you can come back here and click on these and see if they match our criteria. So we're gonna go ahead and click on military romance. And then we're gonna be brought over to the top 100 bestsellers inside of military romance. So when we come over to this page, what we're looking for is the very first book to be 2,500 and under, and the 100th book to be 25,000 or above. So what we'll do is we'll click on the very first book. Oh, whoops, I don't think I opened it in a new tab. But we'll click on the very first book. It looks like that category isn't listed here. So let's just go to the second book, just since we know that one's listed in there. So we'll click on the second book. And we can see that it's ranked number two. It's also the bestseller ranking is 27 in this category, okay? So after we've identified that, we see that the first book or the first or second book is 2,500 or under. So it meets our criteria. So we know that there's some money over here. But whether or not we're going to be able to publish over here in this category is going to be determined by the 100th book. And the reason we're choosing the 100th book is because it goes from 1 to 100 and covers the whole category. So what we'll do is we'll come over here to the second page. And we'll go down to the 100th book, which is Shielding Gillian by Suzanne uh, Stoker, okay? So as soon as we come over here, we'll scroll on down to the cat or to the ranking, and we can see that it's in military romance. So it's in the category that we want, but it doesn't meet the criteria. So it's 2,220. This category is way too competitive. Just by clicking this 100 book, I can guarantee you that any other book that we click on uh, between 1 through 100 is going to also be way too competitive as well. Now, what I said at the end of this is at the end of the, I'm sorry, what I said at the end of this is that if it was 25,000, 
this means that it'd be a profitable category for us to publish our books into, meaning that we can put our books over here, there's readers over here, there's just not enough books, so they're waiting for you to put your books over here. Now, I hope that that made more sense. Just type into the chat box if that made more sense. I try to go as slow as possible to make it more sense, make it make sense. <laughs> yes, super helpful. That made more sense, more sense. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So you're saying this is a category with high competition, but has a lot of money going into it, right? Exactly. High competition, mm -hmm. and these authors are spending a lot of money to keep their books up in these rankings. Now, why Now, why should I not even really put my book over there? Why, so, why should I go to a different category? If this category is making a lot of money, but yet it has heavy competition, why, why can't I just publish it? Because that's making a lot of money. Wouldn't I make money because of that? Sure, good question. So the reason that you wouldn't want to publish a book over here is yes, they're making a lot of money, but on the other side of things, they're also spending a lot of money to keep their books in these rankings. You as a new author don't want to break out in a market like this because you're going to find that you're spending way too much money to just make a profit in this category trying to compete with these other authors. And I can guarantee you that these authors are spending way more than you want to spend on your books. Now, on the other side of things, the reason that you want to find a category that isn't competitive, that matches the criteria of the 100th book being 25000 or above, is because you won't have to spend as much money in that category to rank your books and to get them up in the bestseller rankings. Um, it's just going to be... It's just going to be so much easier. You're going to get so much more exposure over in a category that doesn't look this competitive like we have highlighted there. Awesome. A lot of people are asking, uh, when you said you're spending money, they're asking, what are you spending money on? Yes. So we're spending money on the book itself. So when we publish the book, you know, we would love to think that, you know, you're just going to put it on Amazon. It's just going to be you know, amazing, you know, it's going to be a, a bestseller, like off the bat, but with any business, you know, any business that you run, anything that you do in life, you know, you have to pay to play. So what we're spending money on is Facebook advertisements to rank our books. Um, we also use things such as, you know, newsletter swaps uh, with different authors. And what that basically means is that I have an email list, you have an email list, and we're just sending each other's books out to um, each other's list for organic sales, but primarily what we're spending on is Facebook advertisements so that we can rank our books. Now, Facebook advertisements is for maintaining a rank and not really getting the rank. So, if when your book, when you launch your book and it goes to the market, if you want to maintain that certain rank, like let's say you're in the top 100, if you want to maintain that 100 spot, you need to use Facebook advertisements. Exactly. Exactly, Marty. And for the so now, people, we have a question that a lot of people are probably going to ask. Sure. Um, it said in the podcast, Ty talked about five hundred dollars a month without any marketing and advertising. And right. that's probably a lot of questions people have whenever they see Facebook advertising, uh, promotions, and email marketing. So, do you want to tell them exactly how? the algorithm works right so the way that the algorithm works on amazon guys is that it goes based off of sales so it works on a 30 it works on a 90 day cliff rather so the very first month that you put your book out amazon is looking to promote you as much as they possibly can provided that they're seeing that your book is popular in the sense of getting sales so your whole goal and objective is to get sales and to make more each and every single day than you did the last day. And the more you do of that, the more Amazon's going to promote you. And when we say they promote you, what they do is they send you out in newsletters inside of their email. So anyone that signed up to these, to these newsletters for those categories, they will receive emails uh, with your book in it and at the end of the day, you know, ideally they'll have the opportunity to click on your book and, you know, of course, purchase it. Now, the way that the, t the, the, way that the next two months work is that on the second month, they're going to still be promoting you, but they're going to be backing off a little bit. Um, but they're still going to promote you and the promotion is going to be up to you. 
Um, the third month, they completely back off, and then maintaining that rank where you settle during those three months is where your promotions are really going to kick in. Uh, just like Marty said, the Facebook advertisements are more for maintaining your rank um, during that time frame. All right, awesome. We have a question here that says, how can someone be successful at this with very little limited refunds? So just a quick answer to that, that's having quality books, quality covers, and always putting out quality content to the market. All right, next exactly. question. Let's see. A lot of people are still kind of asking about the categories. Okay, guys, so for the categories, there will be a recording like of the webinar. So I know that this may seem like it's a, you know, a lot of information like initially, you know, it's a new concept, new things that you're learning, but you will have access to a recording so that you can go over um, those examples again um, in your own time as well. So what else do we got here? What's the best approach for a beginner to start? And we're not talking about Facebook ads, we're not talking about promotion. What would be the best thing for a beginner? So for a beginner, the best thing would be, of course, like we were saying, like finding the right category, um, provided that your book is written to market. And when we say written to market, we mean uh, just going back to the question that we had earlier about the ghostwriter and giving them the outline. Um, in that we are essentially writing to market because we are, looking at the reviews we're giving the book over to the ghostwriter and we are also um, making sure that they have all the criteria provided now the best way to get started though would be email marketing um, that was one of our publishing crimes like in the beginning uh, not building a list like the the first things that you should be doing is building up an email list so that you can consistently send out these books to other people and it's fairly easy to build one up um, and we teach about that inside of the off the Zona circle as well, how you can get your email list started too, but email marketing, most definitely. Can you find an example in one of the books? Yes. Yeah, so like, uh, okay, I got you. I got you. Yep. So we'll go over to this author right here. We'll go over to MS Parker. So the way that we build our email list, guys, is we put a free book in the front and back of our books. This gives readers the opportunity to not only buy our book and read it, but when they're reading through it, it gives them an opportunity to, opportunity to join our newsletter as well as so that they can get a bunch of free books as well and also any new releases that you may have. So this author right here, you can see in the front of her book, she has um free book you know get my new book for free click here to subscribe to my newsletter and start reading the exclusive 200 page standalone erotic romance the billionaire sub so by putting this here even if they don't purchase her book you can see you know i haven't even touched her book at all um you can see that they can click right here and go over to her book page her free book page and then on this page they will be able to put their name and email inside of there and submit it. And now you have them on your email list that you can build a relationship with them, build value and send them new releases. That's how you create continuity in the business. Awesome. And we have a question here from Alan. How does the email list work if you're using a pen name? Sure. So it's common practice uh, to use a pen name. A lot of authors like uh, Stephen King, for example, he even has a ghostwriter that he uses and he works under a pen name as well for some of his works. Um, it works out perfectly. It's not looked down upon by anybody um, in the marketplace. Pen names are super common among readers and they completely understand. Uh, just like content like this, if it was content that you know you wouldn't feel comfortable with or publishing under your name, you could publish it under a pen name and operate just like that. All right, we have a question here. Should we build an email list before publishing a book? So that's a great question. Um, I would love to say if you if you can build an email list like before you publish a book, that would be great. 
it works out um I would say just the same on both end of things. Like if you have published a book, like you're not in a bad place. So don't think that way, but it is advantageous if you can build an email list before you uh, publish a book. And the reason for that is because it's just gonna help you and your launch even more. Um, now you are not just publishing a book, but you have people that you can tell about that book to increase your sales and also social proofing, social proof on the book through reviews. Okay, awesome. Terry says, could you do, can you pretty much, can you give a free chapter before you have your book free, like 100% free? So pretty much, can you give something of your book free, like a chapter or two before the full book is done? Yeah, absolutely. So it's funny that you say that because that's one of the things that we use in our self-publishing business as well to sort of like hype the readers up and get them excited uh, for the book that's going to be coming out. We typically release like a chapter or two, you know, maybe even three. And what that does is it captures them, you know, whether it's nonfiction or fiction, it captures them in either the story being fiction or it captures them either than the concepts that you'll be teaching in your nonfiction book. You're pretty much giving them a taste of what they're about to be getting. And the whole goal there is to um, get them captured and captivated in the book. So when the book does come out, they're just hungry and just wanting to buy that thing up. So yes, that's great thinking. Great thinking. <laughs> All right. Emily says, how do you decide what pen name to use? Sure. So when it comes to pen names, and if you want to, you can touch on this, but there's really there's really no criteria for it it's more so so it does depend sometimes on the genre like if you're in romance like we predominantly see woman names and we've seen some men names like work in there but predominantly if you scroll through ro romance you're going to see a bunch of women's names like nicole snow vanessa hudgens or you know things like that but typically you know you can just come up with the name we will go to google and look at like the top 100 um, popular names of this year or top 100 popular names and usually just conjoin names so we'll look at first names and last names and then just combine them you know if it rolls off the tongue good for us if it sounds good to you and you feel like it would you know sound <clears throat> sound nice to other people then you know go with it but don't think too hard on it yeah we literally just make up names from the top of our head and we just go to the the authors and like uh, the best selling authors that we're modeling in the categories. And we just look at all the names and we literally put like a first name and a last name from different authors and just put it together. We don't spend a lot of time on it. Exactly, exactly. So this, this one right here. How do you build a great an question, email? guys? Sorry, go ahead, Marty. How do you build an email list? Yes, that's a great question. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. Uh, you can use Facebook advertisements to build an email list. Other ways that you can build an email list is by literally doing this. You can go over to um, different people's pages and look at these authors. So just so I'm, that might have been fast, but we can click on like Nicole Snow, for example. And we can see, let's see, does she have an email here? She does, so she does have an email here. So what we could do is we could take this author without you know, having an email list yourself, without, I mean, without having an email list yourself, only having your book. We could go to this author and we could ask her if she'd be willing to send our book out for free to her email list. And the way it would go is like this. We could go to Nicole Snow and we could say, hey, Nicole Snow, you know, I'm a new author, I'm just up and coming, I have this book, I would love to, you know, promote you at some point in time, but right now I'm just getting started and I don't have an email list. It'd be really nice if you could just send my book out. Um, it's a great book in your niche, in your category, and in return, when I do start building my email list up, I will promote you at some point in time in the future or send you out to my email list. And your whole goal here is, is to contact not just this one author right here, but multiple authors. So we recommend up to like 30 authors, you know, just send them emails, get on Facebook, see if they're on Facebook and send them messages on there as well and just try to get in contact with them. 
other ways that we build our email list up is a website called bookfunnel.com. If you get on there, they actually offer group promotions and they have them every so often. So every month they will have them in different genres and niches, whether it's mystery and romance, you know, I mean, mystery and suspense, uh, thrillers, romance, uh, westerns, uh, nonfiction books even. And you can put your book up there for free. You would have to give it away for free in exchange for emails. So those are different ways that you can build your list. There's tons of different ways, but these are some of the ways that we primarily use to build up our email list just starting out. And how many leads did you get from that? So from book funnel, thousands. So thousands of leads for just, I, I believe the group promotions are, shoot, anywhere from like 15, you know, max $30. So we're talking about a $30 investment for thousands of leads. Um, on Facebook, uh, you could get you can get thousands of leads there as well, and then also from these authors. Like if they send your book out, um, you can get thousands of leads from there too. Um, and we've gotten thousands of leads just pouring in, and Marty can attest to that. Uh, sending he had his book sent out uh, one time by one author, and just throughout the day, it was just thousands and thousands of them just pouring in. Yeah, it was pretty crazy, and they were all quality leads. Uh, the next book I published, they all went and bought the book. It was, it was pretty crazy. It was really yeah, good. that was wild. I was like, wow, how are you doing this? <laughs> okay, do you have multiple email lists for different niches? So primarily we uh, focus on one niche, but yes, we would have um, different email lists for a different list. So we would segment them differently. It would all be in the same, you know, autoresponder, or, or mail, sorry, not autoresponder, but mail service that you're using. Um, the one that we re recommend is MailChimp. So if you're writing romance books, you would have a separate list for your romance ver books versus the nonfiction books. Um, the reason being is because you don't want to mix messages. You know, you're a romance author. You don't want to be sending them a bunch of like self-help, you know, motivational, you know, content. Although it may relate, they may need to be motivated, but they're just completely different niches. So yes, we do have different lists for uh, different niches. Can you um, pull up Book Funnel and like explain why we use that? Yep. So I'm pulling it up right now. Let's let it load up here. And I hope you all are getting a lot of value inside of in, on this webinar today, guys. If you are, just go ahead and type that into the uh, chat box. This is value filled or uh, whatever comes to your mind. We hope that you're getting a lot of it, a lot out of it right now. <laughs> Keep going. This is great. Yes, yes, yes. Excellent. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> we got <are> value. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so this is the website right here. Um, this is bookfunnel.com, so it would be easy just to, you know, log in here and just sign up on this website. The reason we use this website is for two things primarily. Um, well, really, the primary thing is just, you know, building our email list, but it's also used for giving out free books. So let's say, for example, you know, we're about to release a book, you know, we want to get some reviews on the book. Uh, we have this email list of readers built up, and we want a way to send it out them, send it out to them for free. What we would do is we would create a link on BookFunnel, and there's instructions and everything inside of there once you get signed up, and it's absolutely free to uh, sign up initially. And then I believe that there's a pricing plan once you have uh, multiple authors, <clears throat> multiple authors, or um, what is it? Multiple authors or books on there. I can't remember off the top of my head. But we use this so that we can send them out a link so it's easy access for them to get the book. So when it does come to release day, they can just leave a review on it. Uh, the other thing that we were discussing is building up your email list. So we use it so that they can build up their email list as well. But those are the two things that we use it for, building your email list and also um, sending out free books. It's just a very easy way um, book funnel handles like everything for you. Uh, readers inside of the marketplace are familiar uh, with book funnel as well, so they're used to like seeing those book funnel links too. So yeah.
And how much are we paying? Like ten dollars a month for it, right? Yeah, like ten dollars a month. I believe we have two authors on there. Ten dollars a month, super cheap. Yeah. And do you have a course for building an email list? Yes, it's actually in the author's inner circle. It will say email uh, email marketing. And we actually go through everything, how to build a list, like how to place it in your book, like what to do. It's in there. And there is some questions about when people ask about an email service provider. Someone said use MailChimp instead of Aweber. And someone else said, why not SendLang? Say that one more time for me. I'm so sorry. Using MailChimp instead of Aweber. And why not SendLang? Yes. So the reason that we use uh, MailChimp is because initially it's free. Um, the tools that we recommend, we want to make sure that they are as low cost as possible when you're first starting this business. We don't want you spending, you know, a bunch of money getting this, you know, started up. So MailChimp is free for the first 2,000 subscribers. We figure by the time that you have, you know, 2,000 subscribers on your list, and it's relatively, you know, easy to get that many subscribers, that you should have a handle on this thing. Um, and be in a position to, you know, now use the service as a paid service. Uh, MailChimp is something that we personally use in our, inside of our business. So it only made sense for us to recommend things that work for us now so that we can give it to you. Awesome. So we have a question here. You clearly talked about no funnel, no email list, no marketing needed. Now you're talking about the opposite. So this kind of stuff is for a stream long-term business this is for if you're really trying to do this full-time you really want to be financially free from this and not just making five hundred dollars a month or two thousand it could even be ten thousand dollars a month but this is for if you really want your business to be like extreme heights like fifty twenty thousand dollars a month fifty thousand dollars a month a hundred thousand dollars a month you want an email list like there's so many ways to diversify your income so just to answer the question that we do see a lot, can you make money without doing Facebook marketing, without email marketing, without promotion? It's yes, you can. You can simply just put your book up there and make money. You just do the correct market research, put your book in the right spot, have like trendy titles, and the Amazon algorithm will promote your book. You do not need email marketing. You do not need Facebook marketing. You do not need promotion. These are to help scale your business to new heights. 100% financial freedom, this will help you get it faster. And if you have anything you want to touch on about that, you can. No, that was perfect. Yeah, what you said is exactly right. So everything Marty just said is like to the T, to the T. Someone asked, what's the author going to circle? It's actually one of the course in the um, Kindle Cash Flow University, it will say authors in the circle. And if you don't have it, please just comment in the Facebook group and we can talk to you about it there and make sure that you have it. All right. Is there an app for sending hundreds and even thousands of emails? Yep, so that's what that's what MailChimp is. So it allows you to send, you know, up to that many emails, hundreds of thousands. Um, inside of our account, I'm sure we've sent, you know, hundreds of thousands of emails, you know, over the course of all the subscribers that we've got on board. So you don't have to worry about that. They'll take care of all of that for you. Awesome. How much are you spending on Facebook ads per month? Yep. So that really depends on your budget. So we tell everyone that, you know, everybody has different pockets, you know, everyone, some people are going to have a smaller budget. Some folks are going to have a bigger budget. Um, it really depends on the way that you want to scale things. And without making things too complicated, um, of course, like the more you spend um, on your Facebook advertisements, you know, the better off that you're going to be uh, in the long run uh, by spreading out your budget. But it doesn't, we tell everyone, it doesn't have to be thousands of dollars like initially. You can create your budget, um, use that, make some money from it, and then build up. Once you make some money from the business, take that money and reinvest it back into the business until you can get a bigger budget. So just like we were saying, like some of those competitive categories, those people are spending a lot of money like to be in those spots. So you would kind of have to match them in value 
um, the value being just money spent on these Facebook advertisements uh, to get a big return back on you know some of the things that they're doing. But that's how we point you over to the non-competitive category so that you don't have to focus on that. You can take your mind off of that. Um, just set aside a reasonable budget, I don't know, like a hundred or you know three hundred dollars, and just use that and just spread it out throughout the month. Give yourself some consistent promotion instead of all in one go and produce some income from it. Take the money, reinvest it back and just keep on stacking and stacking and compound that money. All right. Samuel is asking about ghostwriting and like what are the prices? Yep. Did you, you want to touch on that? Yeah. So right now for 10,000 words, we are spending a hundred dollars. And we're using 10,000 words to make a short story. So every t we're making a, a series of five books, spending $100 for each book. That's what we're doing. And then we're putting it together and we're making a box set and putting it out there. So whenever it comes to ghostwriters, it's really about finding a quality ghostwriter. Yes, quality, not any ghostwriter. Find a quality one because that is what generates long-term success. You can always negotiate your prices. Never forget, you are the boss. Negotiate your price. If someone's, if someone comes at you saying like, "Hey, hey I will for ten thousand words, you can pay me three thousand dollars." Like, no, just say, say no. I'm going to pay you a hundred dollars. And if you don't like that, I'm going to find Joe over here that is happy to take this hundred dollars and make this book for me. You are the boss. Okay, we spent a hundred dollars on ten k words, and this is us. Uh, speaking for fiction exactly exactly how many pages is 10,000 words so I'd say 10,000 words goes about 40 pages without proper formatting and then you can push it up to 50 to 56 pages yeah so that's question. go ahead Josh no, I was going to say, you're, you can go ahead that's perfect, yeah, 40 pages and just what you said, uh, formatting can push it up are you only selling in box sets? So no, we actually, so this is a strategy that we always use. We always buy books, um, 10K words per book. All right, we always make a series of five books. We pay $100 for this book, $100 for this one, $100 for this one and so on. We take, we put each book up as a standalone and then have like a cliffhanger. So when someone buys this very first book and they really like it, they're gonna buy the second book and then the next book in line and then the next book. And then we eventually take all those books and put it together to create a box set. So with one series, we publish six total, I would say six total books. So five standalone books and then a box set. And we put that in a different category. So no, we're not only selling box sets, we're selling singles and box set at the same time. If that answers your question. That sounded perfect. Um, I do see a lot of people talking about 25 to 50 pages. So can you go on Amazon and find the short story categories? Because they are kind of hidden on Amazon. They're harder to find than just normal categories. We're going to pull this up for you guys. Hmm. Give me one moment. Thought I saved it here. And yep, I did actually right here in my bookmarks. So you want to touch on that real quick and yep. can you put that link down for everybody too? Yep. Gotcha. Right now. A lot of people have been looking for those categories. I'm going to go ahead and post that inside of the group so everyone can navigate over there and check it out with us. So as far as these categories go guys, um, and just real quick to answer this question real quick, as far as the pages go to, it really depends on the category. So, um, you, may see some bigger books over here and that would be because people are using like keywords to get over into these categories but primarily you're going to see these right here so 15 minutes 30 minutes 45 minutes one hour 90 minutes two hours all of these different categories right here match up to these pages so 30 minutes they are 12 to 21 pages 45 minutes 22 to 32 pages uh, one hour reads, they're 33 to 43 pages. These would be what we consider short stories or summary books. Um, summary books being nonfiction, short, short stories being fiction. Uh, 
So what we're going to do, and yes, Nicole, people really do buy short stories. Trust me, they they buy these things up, don't they, Marty? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you can price them at two ninety nine too, so you yep. make more money with short reads than a novel if you want to be realistic. Seriously. But novels Seriously. do sell more, but short reads will make more. It's, it's, it's a weird kind of concept, but short reads are literally the way to go. You can get in the market faster. You can have more consistency because you can actually publish a short read every single week. Mm -hmm. And then you just have more books in general. And then whenever you have all the books, you can put it together and make a box set for a bonus book. Mm -hmm. like, it's really the way to go. And Shelly, real quick, like most of these books are in uh, Kindle Unlimited. Yeah, you're probably asking yourself, you know, how are they making money off this, these short reads? But you don't look at just the one book. You see, you see one book up there, but most of these people are writing in series. So they're not making money just off of that first book. They're focused on, you know, book one, capturing them there, and then book two, three, four, and five, and then so on. Um, that's how they're making money collectively, not just one joint force. So um let's just go back here i'm gonna go back to kindle short reads and i'm gonna click on just let's say 45 minutes for example as soon as we click on that it's going to bring up a bunch of different categories that fall under the 45 minute short read category so just like we were doing our research before we see the same thing here just under 45 minutes so we have arts and photography, biographies and memoirs, business and money, uh, literature and fiction, mystery, thriller and suspense. There's no limit to what you can publish over here. It's really just a matter of going through here, uh, determining you know, exactly what you want to publish in and making sure that it matches up to the criteria that we're providing you, okay? So we'll just click on health diets and fitness or health, fitness and dieting short reads. We'll come over here and actually let's go over to let's go over to Mr. Thriller Suspense. I just want to see what some of these books are. James Penny's New Identity. Let's check it out. So you can see right here that this book is, and you'll see it on Amazon by the length that it's 24 pages, guys. This book has 149 reviews, 24 pages, and this author is doing pretty well for himself uh, with yeah, his Amazon ranking. ranking there. Yeah, yeah, he has an author really, ranking. That means he's selling a lot. Exactly. So let's just go back. Um, and I'm just clicking through these so just so you can see that these books are actually like short stories. They're not like, you know, big books. So once again, another book, 23 pages long, uh, The Devil's Due. Uh, let's see here. Let's go over to parenting and relationships and just click on these and just see what these books are about. And you can see these books are also like $199, $299, like Marty was talking about. You don't have to price these books at $0.99. Cents. So this book right here is 30 pages. 30 pages long for this book right here, guys. Hey, can you click right there where it says 7 out of 7 for the series? Can you scroll up? See that. Oh, yeah. Yep, sure will. Complete series. Yeah. So Amazon puts your books together for you. Like, you don't have to do it. Like, look how nice they made it. This is really cool. <laughs> yeah. I like this page. <laughs> this is the first time we've seen this book, too. So. Yeah, I've never seen this book before. But yeah, um, there's so many, there's so many different categories on here, guys. It's just really a matter of um, honestly, like we tell everyone, like if you can get just this down right here, like you will dominate Kindle. If you can go on here and just look, take the time, just take the time, an hour or so a day to just go through here, um, look at these categories, you know, write them down and just see if they match up to your criteria. And if they match up to that criteria, the next steps is just finding an author and a book to model. And once you get that down, you know, you're on your way to publishing your book. I mean, getting your book created and then publishing it and then rinse and repeating this process, guys. It, it's not hard, I promise. And of course, you know, we're here every step of the way for you. So, <laughs> so we got a couple of people asking, are there short reads for nonfiction too? Yes, there is short reads for nonfiction. So these are actually nonfiction books right here. Um, parenting and relationship short reads, uh, crafts and hobbies and homes, cookbooks, computers and technology, 
and we'll just go ahead and click into some of these just to show you. So, and also, I, I know a lot of you all love self-help. That's what everyone's go-to is. So we'll check that out also. But um, yeah, crafts, hobby, and home short reads. So let's just see Wonderful Stitch. It looks like this book is about stitching patterns. So we will click here, 31 pages about stitching patterns. Nonfiction short read. We will go back, I'm gonna just close that tab out and let's just click on the very first book, uh, Quilter's Pre-Cut Companion. So it looks like this book is about quilting, bestseller in the category. And guess what, bestseller, 32 pages. Not 100 pages, yeah. not 300 pages, yeah. <laughs> Crazy. What's Crazy. Say again? What's the price? Price is... Five ninety nine for that book. Five ninety nine, bestseller for a short read. Insane. Making a ton of money from that. <laughs> ton of money, because with five ninety nine you get seventy percent commission. So you get, you know, a nice check every single month for that. Exactly. So I'm gonna close out of this tab, and I'm gonna just show you one more until we move on. But uh, 45 minute self help uh, short reads and guys, once again, this is just one short read category. This is just 45 minutes. We still have um, uh, 15, 30, one hour, 90 and two hours uh, that you can go through. So some self help books here. Let's see. Make him beg to be your boyfriend in six simple steps. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> My girlfriend wants to use this one right here without me knowing. <laughs> yeah, that, that book is pretty successful if you look at all the reviews and everything. Yeah, 896 reviews. <laughs> <laughs> 30 pages. Your research is safe you know, for sure. A very interesting question from Hannah. Why would the ghostwriters sell rights rather than profit themselves? Sure. So honestly like a lot of ghostwriters aren't thinking about this guys they're not thinking about the business side they're not thinking like you like an entrepreneur you're looking at this like man i can make a killing from this i can make tons of money you know i'm gonna go get me a ghostwriter i'm gonna pay them one time and just do this thing what they're thinking is you know i'm just looking for somebody to pay my bills or you know get a client you know get some consistent ongoing work just like anybody would be you know looking for a job and looking to make some money for themselves so that's what they're thinking. They're, they're on that side of things. Their reward is ongoing work and long-term work with you. They're not looking to make a profit. They're not looking to um, put their books on Amazon and, you know, learn how to publish or, you know, learn how to do the research and things like that. They just want to work alongside of you, you know, get their uh, one-time payment for the books. And for any of you wondering, um, they, they, are they have an understanding that they are assigning the rights over to you and inside of the facebook group too in the file section i believe there is a ghostwriter agreement there that states all of that as well just to give you some peace of mind um that it is a one-time payment you know they're assigning you the rights to the book so that when you publish the book there's no attachment to them there's no um ongoing royalty uh payments that are split between you and them all the royalties go to you so you don't have to worry about that but yeah really at the end of the day they're just they're just not thinking about that to be honest yeah they don't want to do that you know we exactly. actually have uh, talked to some of our ghostwriters that that that's something that they don't want to do they just want to write the story they don't want to worry about everything else they just want to get paid for it um, exactly who sets the prices of your book um, so the book's on Amazon, right? <laughs> yeah, yep. so this is the question. Who sets the prices of your book? So that's going to be yes. you. You set the prices. You put what you want to put on your book for your pricing. And we have a couple people talking about, can you touch in on Kindle Limited? Like, yeah, how does so, Kindle Limited work? yep. And I will try to bring that up as well and see if they have the fund at the top of the page. I don't know if they'll have it there or not. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. Yep, they do actually. So right here at the very top of the page, uh, they have a global fund that they create like every single month that is split between 
authors that are inside of Kindle Unlimited. So Kindle Unlimited is a program that they created for readers and authors. On the reader side of the things, they pay a $9.99 subscription every single month to get your books absolutely free. Now that may sound crazy. Why would I give my book away for free? You know, I'm trying to get paid from this thing, right? Yeah, you are trying to get paid from this thing. So on the incentive side of things for authors, what they do is they pay you out a, it changes every single month. So I can't give you an exact amount, but they pay you a, a percentage every time somebody goes through your book and reads it and flips a page basically. So whenever they're flipping a page, you know, they, you're getting paid out on it. So instead of buying the book for whatever you have it listed, whether that's 99 cents, you know, a dollar 99, 299 and so on, they're getting the book for free. But the incentive is that they're, you're getting paid out on page reads. And that's really where the money is um, in Kindle Unlimited. Uh, you'll be getting both though. You'll be getting sales and you will also be getting um, paid out on the page reads. Now, the thing about Kindle Unlimited, and uh, this may sound weird, but it's, it's, it's totally fine in what we do with all of our books. But we enroll them in Kindle Unlimited, and with that program, you have to have a 90-day exclusivity to Amazon. And what that means is that you can't publish your book anywhere else for sale. You can't sell it on your website. You can't sell it anywhere except for Amazon as long as you are a part of that program. But once again, the incentive is, you know, you're going to be getting paid out on those page reads, and they make sure that you're incentivized uh, being a part of that program. So it's completely worth it. Um, we love being exclusive to Amazon for some of our books and it's it's a great program to make money from. And can you go to one of the books that are enrolled in Kindle Limited on like on yep. Amazon? I think you already have one pulled up because we have That's a question nice. here where it says confused where it says Kindle is zero dollars Kindle Limited. Yep. So let's see. Like this book right here says uh, Kindle Unlimited read for free or two ninety nine buy with one click. So they're giving them two different options. If you're a part of Kindle Unlimited, you can go in here, you can click read for free, and then you'd be able to get the book. Um, I'm not signed into this, you know, or uh, signed into my account. But if you were signed in, you would be able to just go right in here and download this book. Or as a reader, you whoops. Or as a reader, you'd be able to come over here and then just click it one time and then just purchase the book uh, by signing in. Awesome. And we have a question yeah. here. If you do the first book free with draft to digital do you still do Kindle Unlimited? So no, that very first book would not be in Kindle Unlimited. Um, if it's free on draft to digital it would be free um, on draft to digital and also Amazon. So it will be free on a bunch of different retailers like iTunes, uh, Kobo, the Nook and things like that. So that would fall out of the Kindle unlimited program, but, uh, the rest of your books would be enrolled, um, in Kindle unlimited. And that's the reason why we make it free on those platforms so that you can uh, drive traffic over to the paid books. Awesome. And we have a couple people asking, where do we see, uh, or how do we track sales whenever we make them on Amazon? Yep, so on this website, you would be able to uh, log into your dashboard on kdp.com, and you would be able to see your sales from there. So they show you how many uh, books that you've sold, and they show you all the Kindle uh, reads that you have as well. And then, Marty, what's the one tool that we use um, right now for uh, looking report. a little deeper? AK Book Report or something like that? Yeah, AK Report. I think that's what it is. AK Report. And it get, it say, yeah, I'll pull it up. Yeah. It's AK Report. Yep. So this gives you like a more in-depth view of... Uh, your dashboard and let you know not only you know how many sales and you know books that, I mean sales and reads that you've got but it lets you know in live time and this is what it will look like in the back office so it will show you your books that you've got it would also give you graphs and let you know some of your good days some of your bad days and you know this would be based off a of certain things that you may have done or not done on that day 
and it lets you know the royalty that you brought in. Um, not it lets you know sales and also the Kindle reads that you brought in as well. We have a question from Kimberly. Mm -hmm. So you can't make a book permanently free in Kindle uh, KDP. So no, you can't make it uh, permanently free on just KDP. Uh, their thing is they call it price matching. Uh, that's Amazon's rule. So if they see that it is a lower price somewhere else, you know, being the publishing giant, they want to be fair and be as competitive as they possibly can. And if they see it free on another platform, um, just like you'll be publishing through draft the digital um, on iTunes and Kobo and so on, they're going to make it free on their platform as well. But if your book is not free on those platforms, um, the only option that you would have, the lowest price that you could give it is 99 cents on the platform. After 90 days, can you publish your book at, uh, on other platforms? Yes, after 90 days you can, but you have to make sure that you unenroll from the program. Um, on KDP, it will auto enroll you back into the program um, after 90 days is up. So we would we would advise you that you make preparations ahead of time that if that's something that you want to do, unenroll yourself, that you plan that in advance and make sure that you want to check that box in the back office um, of Amazon. And they give you the option when you're publishing. Uh, to enroll in Kindle Unlimited, and when your book is actually published, you will see that on the side where you can click the option, you know, go to the KDP Select and unenroll yourself, and it will tell you there, you know, how many more days that you have in the program, and if you want to, after that time, publish somewhere else, then yes, you can absolutely publish everywhere. And Kindle Unlimited is free. You don't have to pay anything for it. I got some people asking how much does it cost to pay. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. All right. So what else do we have? Do you enroll Kindle Unlimited per book as an author? Say that one more time. I'm sorry. Do you enroll your in Kindle Unlimited per book as an author? So every oh, book okay. that you could have enrolled in Kindle Unlimited? Yes. Yeah, so um, you would do it per book. So every time you publish, they're going to give you the option to publish, to enroll that book into Kindle Unlimited. Um, and then, of course, like if you don't want to, just don't check the box. But for every single book, they will give you the option. It's not so much that you have this off their name and then every single book that you publish is automatically enrolled. You'll get the option to do it every single time you publish each book. We have another question. Why would you want to unroll yourself from Kindle Unlimited? You said enroll or unenroll? Unenroll. So mm, that that just that's a tricky question, and I would only say that because it's based on your preference, really. Um, everybody wants to do something different. Some people love Amazon. Some people want to try different things. Uh, we personally love Amazon, so we enroll ourselves and elect ourselves in that program. Uh, some folks, you know, they love Amazon, but they also have readership over in different areas. Uh, their readers love books, getting books on iTunes, and they maybe maybe they love getting it on the Nook or the Kobo. It really just comes down to your preference, you know, where your readership is. But uh, with our teachings, primarily your readership is going to be on Amazon, so you'll be a, you'll be elected in that program. <laughs> so Justin asks, do you recommend writing your own books and? Hiring ghostwriters? Yeah, so um, once again, that comes down to preference as well. Like if you're a writer, um, totally. Like if you feel like that's going to, you know, get you mass production, you know, help you uh, get things out there much faster, then totally. Yeah, go ahead and write your books if you have that gift and also get ghostwriters. Um, I suck at writing. <laughs> I, don't, yeah. I don't like writing. <laughs> Please, and, <yeah. laughs> right, we both suck at it. We just don't want to do it. So... Uh, it's our preference to get ghostwriters because they help us in that, you know, area of weakness and help us be creative <laughs> and put those books out there a lot faster. But yeah, it's it's definitely faster. If you can write and um, you feel confident in your writing, then most definitely go ahead and write and also get a ghostwriter. Double down. Do you have to have an LLC to create an Amazon account? 
You don't. So you can do it both ways. You can start off as a sole proprietor, and you could also um, create an LLC as well. Um, of course, like, you know, we're not tax advisors and things like that, so we would never give advice on that. Um, Amazon has tons of information on those sort of things. But uh, primarily, you know, we use our business to um, protect ourselves and then also write things off, such as uh, the production costs of books or editors and uh, things like that. It's just an advantage at the end of the year, you could say. All right. So a bunch of questions coming in regarding ghostwriters. How do you know this is original content from a ghostwriter? Like, how do you know they didn't, they didn't just copy it from the Internet? Sure. So with fiction, it would be kind of hard to um, copy that sort of information. Um, we use websites such as like copyscape.com. You can run your content right through there. Simple answer. And it will search the internet database pretty much for, yeah, so I'll go ahead and pull that up. Oops, if I can spell, this is why we have writers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you'd be able to search for any uh, plagiarism or anything like that to make sure that your content is uh, not being plagiarized and you can just paste it right inside of there and they will let you know if that content is also online so that's more so i would say excuse me i would say a non-fiction works um if you don't feel comfortable definitely run it through here but before you even uh, get to that point um, i'm pretty sure on upwork they you can approve the work before uh, yeah. you pay your ghostwriter for anything so that you can look at any revisions and things like that as well. Hey, can you pull up Upwork also? We got some people asking where we go to hire our ghostwriters. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Upwork is always our main site that we go and get our ghostwriters. It's just been good to us. There we go. Boom. That's how happy you all are going to be when you get your ghostwriters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is where we go right here. Uh, goes uh, upward. <laughs> so Jonathan has a question. If you have okay. a good ghostwriter, do you still need an editor? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> that was one of our mistakes in the beginning. Um, we thought, you know, we could have this ghostwriter. You know, they're just going to write the books. You know, everything is good. It looked good to us anyway. You know, we didn't know any difference at the time, but. The readers, they they were quick to spot out like every single thing in that book. They <laughs> we had we had yeah. one book they they just beat up, but we learned our lesson very quickly that we needed an editor to go through it. Um, for the reasons really just to create the flow of the story and make sure that when your readers are reading through it, that you know it's consistent. I guess the best way to put it is it's just like watching a movie. Uh, you know, you're in it, you know, it's getting to the best part, and then the movie starts buffering, or something just interrupts the movie, or it just cuts off, or something like that. And you're like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's just the, it's just the same thing like with books. Um, you don't want any interruption or distraction from the story or concepts or um, anything like that in the book. So yeah, you definitely need an editor. And you can find editors, designers on Upwork.com also. And someone's asking about a price of an editor. Right now we pay $50 for a book, uh, 10K words. And it's really gonna come down to the type of editor that you have and negotiating the price. But right now we find a uh, $50 for 10K words, pretty fair. Actually, a really good price. Yeah, it's really good. Okay. Let's see. So everyone's asking about editors. Editors, editors, editors. Yeah. <laughs> you all loving this, guys? Yes, loving it. Yes, yes, loving it. Thank you. Value. How much do you pay <laughs> for designers? Right now, we're paying $50 per cover. And what we like to do is we like to keep by one cover and then just change the keywords on the cover. So, Josh, the best thing we can do is give an example. You want to pull up Hannah Ford's 
Yeah, oh, I'll pull uh, up Hannah for it. Oh, yeah, she's, she's the best example, huh? Yeah. <laughs> this author has been around forever. Like, before we started, this author was around, like, still killing it to this day. I'll just go to, like, here we go. This is a good series. Mm, we'll go to this one. So, uh, these books right here, you can see that most of them, like, they're, they have different, they have just about the same. So, they have, like, different models in different positions, some of them with the same models in different positions, but what maintains is the font on here. So, what he is the same, and then they have, like, a different title, Explorers, Bargains, Provoked, Promises, but it's all just one word that's really um, alternating there. I think maybe Ella London, if you want to type that one in. You yeah, might sure. Have a good too. If I remember her name correctly. I think that's it. Yep. Boom. Go ahead. Yep, so this one as well, you can see like um, for the Wicked series that she has, same model, same background, same everything. But what distinguishes this book and makes it different from everything else is that one word. Lie, good, bad. I don't know how many other books she has in that one series. But um, even for this one right here, riding forever, riding hard. Oh, you gotta um, calm yourself down, man. Yeah, that... <laughs> We need different examples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, these right here, even like some of these books, like um, the distinguisher for these aren't just the words, like they're all the same title, but they have different, <laughs> they have different backgrounds. Like this one's black, blue, a uh, little purple or a little red in the um, blindfold, purple in the blindfold. So these are things that make the, or that tell the reader anyway, that they are, uh, different books, anyway. So we got a <laughs> question. How long that. have we been doing? Yeah, I know they're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> How long have we been doing Kindle publishing? Man, so we've been doing this for quite some time since shoot 2012. Um, we've been publishing books, so we've been we've been through it all. We've been through all the trial and error, you know, all the ups and downs. The you know not building an email list, not uh, hiring an editor, getting beat up by reviews. Uh, you all saw Marty's uh, post inside of the groups. Just type that in the chat box if you saw that. Uh, what was his name, Drew? <laughs> yeah, Drew, man. <laughs> beat that book up. But, but that's just motivation at the end of the day. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we've been doing this for quite some time, guys, and it's been a, like a very lucrative business for us. And like, we definitely feel like, you know, not just feel it, but know it. it's going to be very lucrative for you all as well as, you know, the more you all get these concepts down, the more questions that you ask, like inside of the group and just uh, really participate and, you know, make a full commitment to this thing and understanding it. And most importantly, just getting on here and just looking around on Amazon, like they are literally telling you what is working at the end of the day there's no way around that like you log on amazon you look at these authors you see that they're best sellers you know you see that the uh categories match up to our criteria like they're literally telling you um what is working in the marketplace so we got here do you guys do this full time when did you quit your nine to five job yeah so we do do this full time um we, we've been publishing for quite some time. When did we quit, Marty? Back in when? Like 2015 when we quit. Yeah. yeah. 2015. Uh, we stopped working and then we decided to take this thing head on. We were just like, you know what? You know, we're tired of working. We really just want to just publish ebooks and more importantly, more importantly, just create like financial freedom for ourselves. And uh, we were able to do that. And now we're teaching this stuff. So the business is pretty passive for us right now. Um, we make some great money with it and we still publish books consistently to this day. Like it's it's more fun and you all will see like the fun in it as you all move along through the process as well. But it's an extremely fun business. 
uh, we are more on the side of teaching now because it's so passive. And our whole goal and mission is really just doing more th things like this. So bringing you all up to that level. Um, you know, we understand that you all have dreams and goals and things that you want to accomplish. And you're looking at this, you're on this webinar because you're looking at this as a means to an end to create that freedom for yourself through publishing books. This may not, of course, like be the end all be all for you. You know, there may be other things that you want to do, but uh, we understand uh, what it's like to just be starting out, you know, in this business. It's a lot of information, uh, new concepts and things like that. So our mission and goal right now is just, you know, being co completely committed to uh, teaching you all this stuff and getting your books up there so that you can start making some money and let's say live them dreams. Got a question here. We're, we're almost about to wrap this up, guys. So I'm going to be answering a couple more questions. So in 2015, how much passive income were you making? Uh, 2015, we started off like with the very first books that we published, honestly. It was 35 cents. And it was only because, don't get discouraged with that comment, it was only because of the way the pay period ended uh, when we were publishing our books. So, in the yeah. dashboard, go, oh, in the dashboard, it was uh, way more. Uh, but 35 cents is what we started off with. And then what we go to, what, 500 and 3,000? And then from there, we went off to make $10,000 consistently like per month um, with uh, publishing books on Amazon. And I would say like the big contributors to that was mainly our email lists. Like we built up an email list of readers that were wanting to purchase our books and hear about them. So, you know, we were thinking about continuity in the business. We were, excuse me, we were thinking forward. Um, not just, you know, depending on just this one system to sell for us, but creating multiple systems to do that, multiple lists, and also uh, writing in a series. So we weren't just thinking about, okay, well, we're just going to put one book up there, you know, just put our hands together and just hope it works out. No, we were thinking that we're going to put this one book up here, and then we're going to put another book up there, and then another one, and then another one. And we're going to make them fall in love with these characters or our concepts. And then they're just going to keep on purchasing our books over and over and over again. So we have a question here. How many books have you published? And to be completely honest, uh, we lost count. I mean, it's well over 200 books. I can tell you that. Uh, if we go on our, our Dropbox, we got tons of books just stacked up. We got tons of books on Amazon on the different pin names. Uh, we've been doing this since 2015 when we really started going strong at it but we've been doing it at, um 2013 when we first started but when we started when we uh started doing more and just 100 percent focused on it it was 2015 and we've been publishing series every single um every single month like two to three series a month so it's just been stacking up and every series has six books so over yep. 200 for sure yeah what categories do you publish in? We're in romance, so sorry for all the romance examples. You know. <laughs> I know not everybody wants to see these guys. We don't either, but you know it's making us money. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so does your first book still sell? Yeah, it does. Still making money to this day. From 2015, still making money. How many books generated 10K a month? So when we first made our 10K a month, we had three series out, right? Am I, am I, yeah, no, yeah, you're right. We had three series out. Yeah, it was three series. So I want to say what, five books per series? Yeah, five books per series. And then, and then we made an additional book with the box set. And the box set is really what uh, skyrocketed everything. You know, Literally. we had a series making money every single day, and then the box set kept making all the Kindle Unlimited page reads. So it worked pretty good. Do you use a pen name for your email list? Absolutely. We only have pen, uh, pen names. Are they all fiction? Right now, yeah, we're more focused on fiction right now. How many books do you publish a month? We publish, we publish about two books a month. Well, two series a month. So every two weeks we focus on a series. 
or every one week we focus on a series and then we switch it to another series the next week. That made sense. Yeah, no, that made sense. That made sense. What's what the else best we got category here? that's working for you right now? Romance is, uh, we're not going to go in detail because that's going to cause competition. <laughs> <laughs> but just know that we're a romance. And romance has been working pretty good for us. We've been doing that since the beginning. Uh, actually, we started in nonfiction. And when we made money from that, then we went over to romance. Are you running a business right now? Uh, yes, we have an account, uh, a business account that we're, we have our Kindle Direct Publishing on. So it's a business account. And do pen names give us more privacy? Absolutely. That's why we have our pen name because you can't type my name in Amazon and find my romance book. Cause I don't want, don't want my friends and family to see that, hey, I got some guys with shirts off on the cover, you know? This is not me. It's really not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there any more questions you want to grab? How yeah, many I'm people are on your email list? We have right now, we have over 55,000 on our email list. We've been building it up for a while. And it's super simple. When you have like the opt in, you're just doing promotions. Like all you do is just, just put a click of a button, man, and, and it really just starts building up over time. If you just keep doing it, you will eventually have a 10,000 uh, 10, uh, list of people on there. And just to break this down from a better perspective, when we first hit our 14K check, we only had 2,000 people on our email list. So it was only 2,000. How many page? of how many pages of our books that are in the series. So each book in our series is 10K words. So that's about, and we, with the proper formatting, it was about 50 to 56 pages per book. How much was your first investment? $250. You paid, no, we're not Ella London. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> Yeah, we paid two hundred and fifty dollars in the very beginning when we started, and we just took it step by step. Like we didn't have a lot of money, and we don't want people to look at this like, "Dang, like I had to pour thousands of dollars just to get this book up." Like, no, we we went, we paid a hundred dollars over here for this book. We paid a hundred dollars over here for this book, and then we made one book free in the very beginning, and then led it over to this book over here the second book in the series. And then we used the rest of the money for the cover art. And as we kept getting money, we just kept making more books. We just took it step by step. And eventually um, the business was just making money on its own. And we just kept reinvesting that back in. And then the business started paying for itself. So no, we didn't, we didn't put a lot of money up, up front. Not at all. And guys, we're gonna be wrapping up here soon. So we're gonna take a, a couple more questions and then we're gonna have some closing here and then of course we'll be seeing you on the next one here so any last questions that you may have anything that you want to go ahead and get in go ahead and type it into the chat box now we got do you use female pen names <laughs> absolutely <laughs> absolutely never look I'm, I'm freaking, I'm a ghost on Amazon right now. You're never going to find me. Yeah, I'm, but just know I'm in a woman pin name. Absolutely. I'm going to answer Punk's question. Do you send your email list through Amazon or do you use an email service provider? We use a uh, email service provider. So uh, what we were talking about earlier, we use MailChimp. I can't remember if I went over here or not. But we use MailChimp.com. Um, for our email service provider. So any emails that we get, um, Punk, we will s have them imported on here automatically uh, and they will be sent emails as well, like through MailChimp too. Well, that's, are we publishing in short reads? Yes, we are in short reads and we're in the box set market. And we're a novel too, but we, we like short reads more than anything because you can just get in way faster and be consistent and take over markets and stuff. It's just been pretty good. All right. What else do we got here? Questions are loading up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's a good question. We're trying our best to answer everybody. <laughs> How, you reviewing this? How do you set up an email campaign? It is in the course. We do teach uh, the email marketing and the authors in a circle. 
it's in the um Kendall Castle University. You have to go to the authors in a circle section and you will see email marketing there and we teach everything. Same thing as Facebook too. Let's see what else do we got? Two more minutes, guys. Two more minutes. Put those questions inside of the chat box. Do you publish in romance or erotica? Just romance. I, I ain't getting that dirty, dirty. It's just in romance. <laughs> I mean, erotica is a, a super good it. market. Like, don't get me wrong, it's super good, but we're not in there. <laughs> Fifty Shades are great. No, that's not us. <laughs> <laughs> do you do audiobooks? Yes, we do. Uh, audiobooks is the next big thing, man, and we're gonna be um, delivering more content about that. How you can turn your book into an audiobook? It's actually the next big thing right now, audiobooks are booming. How do you, you choose a title? We literally just make them up from other best selling authors. We just put some stuff together and with the information and research that we have for our stories. Um, Josh, do you have a book up right now? Uh, sure, yeah. We have one right here. Yeah, so uh, make him bet. No, go, go to another event. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get out of the world, bro. We got. You got like a mystery or something. Uh, yeah, let's go to mystery. We're going to mystery, guys. We're done. We're done with the guys and romance. Yeah, man. Here we go. Recruit. Yeah. Okay. Well, recruit. I like that. No, I'm not trying to talk. I'm not trying to talk about make them beg and stuff. It's just <laughs> out of here. It's supposed to be a question to answer, not down to dirty. All, All right, right. So what was? You want to jump on it? No, I didn't. I was going to ask what the question was, but you got it. You got it. Just the titles. So you see, you have, pull up another book too. So you see the recruit right here. So we would just think, all right, the recruit. Let's say our book, we were modeling this cover. It says the recruit. What else we got? And it's so much easier to do it in romance, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is it? The Athens Solution. Let me find a different one. Right. So the recruit. The recruit. Athens Solution. You know what I mean? But that doesn't sound too hot. So I will go pick something else. So what else do we got? Oh, I see what we're doing here. Lethal Emergency. The Recruit. Lethal oh, Emergency. So I would just, like you see, Double Cross. The Recruit. Double Cross. We would go through different titles and then we would just put things together. But we are modeling best-selling books. So we're not just taking anybody. We're looking at the best sellers and we're using their titles and we're creating different titles off of a bunch of different best sellers. And you're probably thinking like, why would you do that? Because they are using certain keywords that are trending right now. So we want to hop on the trend because their, their books are doing amazing. We want to get some of that success. So we create a title from what they're doing, what they have with another bestseller. We put it to, together and the keywords just start picking up traffic it just works pretty good i hope that i hope i explained that pretty good yeah no that was great that was perfect how do you get reviews initially after publishing your first book so getting reviews initially on your book would start with uh your email list uh really um who is that the boyfriend solution somebody the boy, yes. <laughs> that's a funny one <laughs> So for reviews, it would start with your email list, or you could also, like we were saying before, you could even uh, message some of those authors on Amazon. So let's say that you were in this genre, you could go ahead, you know, click over to LT Ryan, you know, he may or may not have an email here to contact him. Um, he doesn't have an email, but he has social media. So you could go over to his Facebook page, um, send him a message to his Facebook page, you know, tell him that you are coming out with a book, tell him that you know you're a new author that you're looking just for some support and reviews on that book and nine i would say i would say seven times out of ten like these authors are more than open and willing to um help you with these sort of things as well um to get reviews and to get you started and excuse me if they say no or they're not willing to do it then you can totally you know just move on to someone else's don't get hurt by it not everyone in the world is going to be open to it, but that's why we recommend you send messages to 30 people so that you can increase your odds that maybe, you know, 10 out of the 30 
um, we'll send your book out um, for those purposes so you can get review sales and so on. And if you want to ask your family and friends to review your book, you should make sure that they put that, hey, I received this book in exchange for an honest, uh, honest review. And Josh, if you can find an example of that too, just so they can see it. Um, just because if you don't tell Amazon that you received this book for an honest review, they will think it's fake and then they will just remove it. And then if you go message to Amazon, there's literally nothing you can do about that. Like they're some straight savages. When they do something, it's usually like they just ignore you after that. Like that's the sucky part about Amazon. Is there any uh, example down there? What do you want me to do? Like them saying like it's an honest review, right? Yeah, like I received this uh, book in the stand for a free copy or something like that. Let's see. If we can find one, we mm -hmm. might have to go back to romance. Yeah, hey, we're going back to romance. We're going back to romance. Back to the abyss, you guys. The um, abyss. <laughs> I know this author probably has something like that. How do you deal with bad reviews? We just ignore them and we don't let them get to us. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. We you also always have to remember that they are opinions and they don't determine your success. Every author gets bad reviews, no matter how good the book is. It just doesn't matter. Everybody has their own opinion. Don't take it personal. Exactly. Well, Les Brown says someone's opinion doesn't have to be your reality. It sure wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> and my first review was a terrible one, man. Let's see. I don't even know if uh, they're gonna say it on here, but yeah, that's what they that's what they typically say. Though it's an honest review, or they yeah. received this book in exchange for an honest review. Well, these are verified purchases, so you won't. Yeah. See them yeah. But just make sure they say that they received it, a free copy for an honest review, so Amazon doesn't um take them off, because they will do that. Exactly, exactly. Um, let's see here. We have tons of stuff like rolling in here right now, tons of questions. When you um, use your so, pen name, do you put in about the author with the picture? Uh yes, yeah, so we do put an about an author there too. Um it doesn't have to necessarily like be a person <laughs> um on there. It can be like a logo or something like that. Like this author, for example, you know, her name's Sarah. Uh, Jay Brooks, but uh, she has like a logo here uh, for her name, yeah. even though she's writing under that pen name. So it doesn't have yeah. to be like an that's a that's actually a guy. We know who that is. That's a guy. Don't let it fool you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. So look, it's been great being here with you all. Um, we hope that we got to most of the questions here. I know there was a lot that we didn't get to, but. Um, in that case, what you can do, if you're in the Facebook group, you can go ahead and just post inside of that Facebook group. We're just going to go ahead and post that one more time inside of the chat box. And um, if you're not, go ahead and join up there. We look at that as sort of like the backbone to everything that we do um, as far as supporting you, your business goals, and um, everything that, you know, pertains to self-publishing. So if you did get a lot of value out of this, you know, just type into the chat box, like, thank you, you know, got a lot of value out of this. Um, one other thing that we do want to mention, we will have a live event at some point at the end of this year on the 7th and 8th. Uh, you will be receiving more details about that, but we're going to go ahead and put the link inside of there, inside of the chat box for you to click on just to check out. It's www.learn.com forward slash live. So you'll be getting more information about that where you can see us live and um, actually do some hands-on stuff. But aside from that, guys, it's been great being here with you all. We appreciate every single one of you being on here. Definitely post inside of the group for any questions. Marty, did you have anything else that you would like to say? Uh, thank you all for investing your time here. We hope we provided a lot of value. I see a lot of value in the, uh, the chat box. We really appreciate it because that's all we want to do is provide value. Really thank you all. And we're going to be doing more of these for sure. Yes, yes, yes. All right, everybody, it was great having you here, and you all have a wonderful night. See you later. See ya.